Hey everyone, uh, I'm going to show you how to use my uh, mandala creator thingy. I'm going to make this kind of a geometric pattern here. So the first thing you'll do is uh, download that uh, zip folder from Creative Market uh, and uh, go ahead and unzip it. I've already done that here. Uh, and you'll see some files inside. Uh, this is like the template. You're going to make all the mandalas in there. So. Uh, Launch Illustrator. Uh, it can be Illustrator uh, 5 or 6 or anything really. Um, but it won't work on CS3 or CS2. So open up that template. There we go. It's this one right there, Mandala Creator. And it's pretty much just a blank artboard. Um, but it has the brushes you'll need uh, to do the patterns built in which is important to link with the scripts. So let's load up those uh, scripts. So make sure the actions panel is visible. Uh, a lot of the time you'll actually see uh, uh, some other action scripts that are like default or something. I like to clear those. Uh, and then load actions. There, Mandala Toolkit. So these are the uh, actions you'll use to build the Mandala. Um, if they don't look like this, uh, make sure that uh, button mode is uh, uh, set up. Uh, so the first thing you want to do when you uh, make a mandala is just uh, start a new mandala. And what this does is it makes a circle with the right stroke width and all that and centers it on the artboard. Uh, it's really important that you don't change the stroke width, anything like that. Just use the tools to build your mandala. So also you'll need the brushes, so make sure the brushes panel is open. You can find that in window brushes. Uh, and this is how you'll select the pattern. So as you can see, we've got uh, the center mandala ring thingy. And uh, you can pick any of these patterns. Uh, but I feel like uh, in the center of a mandala, uh, simpler patterns look better. Uh, so that's kind of how these brushes are organized. Um, so the simpler ones will be in the beginning. So uh, this one's pretty cool. Uh, that's cool. Now, um, you can shrink the ring or grow the ring. Um, and then you can actually double the pattern or divide the pattern. Um, so it's, it's always going to stay. If you use the tools, everything will stay kind of synchronized. So as a default, uh, the patterns will show up. Uh, with six instances, um, but if you shrink the pattern, which doubles the instances, uh, now you have 12. Uh, grow it and you have six, grow it again you have three, but that's kind of pointless. <laughs> so let's start with this shape. Uh, duplicating it will copy uh, the ring that's selected and then uh, drop it behind and then make it a little bigger so you can see it just like that. So I can grow it or shrink it or anything like that. So I'll rotate it. And I think I'll select a different pattern for this one. That's kind of cool actually. Okay, I'll duplicate it again. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then I'll rotate. Um, so you'll notice that the six instances is getting kind of uh, kind of big so I'll shrink the pattern uh, grow the ring again and I want it by default it'll align like this so I'll just I'll rotate it 45 degrees so now it's aligning vertical just like that uh, okay that looks good I'll duplicate it again uh, Rotated 45. That's a pretty good looking pattern there. Um, I'll add a nice uh, sort of a ring behind it. That'll be cool. You can't see it because uh, this pattern is quite small, so it's being kind of obscured by the stuff in front. So I'll grow it so you can see it there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, all these lines are all different thicknesses, so I have this cleanup tool to make them all the same thickness. So just select it all and uh, finish it with the cleanup tool. Okay. There, that's
that's done. So now all the lines are the same thickness. And now they're no longer brushes, they're actually vector uh, shapes now that you can uh, um, edit and change however you want, actually. So I'm going to make this kind of cool uh, geometric pattern here, and I'll show you how I do that. So I'm going to grow this a little bit. I don't need the brushes anymore. I'm going to get rid of that. Um, don't really need these anymore. So here we go. I'll center it on the artboard. If it doesn't center on the artboard, you have to define that here. You want it to be aligned to artboard. Uh, I'll make a uh, hexagon here. Actually, uh, that's uh, something I had set up before. Here we go, hexagon. Um, and I want it to go to the back. There we go. I'll center that on the artboard. Um, you know, actually, I'll clip the... Uh, the uh, mandala pattern, so I'll bring that to the front actually. Shrink it. Mm. Okay. Okay, everything is all lined up now. Uh, let's make that into a clipping mask. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'm going to uh, copy that hexagon shape again. So here's my hexagon. Um, let's give it a black border there. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Um, copy, paste in front. So here's another one. And uh, Let's, I'm going to group those and uh, give them a white fill and uh, send them to the back again. Send back. Send back. There we go. Uh, and then I'm going to give this one a nice little dashed line. Uh, I prefer the corners being regular, so I use that tool there. That's pretty cool looking. Um, you can change the distance, of course, of the dashed line uh, with this tool here. Uh, six will work for me. Um, that's looking pretty good, uh, but uh, it needs a few triangles. So I'll select the that polygon tool again, and if I use the down arrow key, I can actually uh, make my own shapes that are uh, isometric or regular. So um, let's constrain that with shift. That's a good looking triangle. Uh, it still has the dotted line effect that I had applied to this one, uh, but I like it. So I'll center it. I'm going to send that one to the back. That's cool looking. So copy it again. I'm gonna flip it around. Uh, I'll group these two. And then I will align those just like that. Mm. See how this one is covering? I want them to show through. So I'll uh, get rid of their fill. There, now they kind of show through there. Um, it needs a circle. That'll look cool. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want that to have a, dot, a dashed line. Okay. Let's add another circle there. Okay. Now I want everything to have the same line thickness. So two points. And then maybe I'll make a few things a little bit bolder. So I'll make this one uh, four points. That looks cool. And then um, I can actually go into my mandala by uh, clicking a bunch of times here. And I'll select this ring. The rings are all grouped, so you can change 
uh, the stroke of uh, all the pieces at once. I'll change that one to three, maybe? Two. Okay, and then... Actually, I'll make that one a dashed line. I'll make this a little bolder. Now I'll select uh, everything here and um, I'm going to rasterize it and trace it. So rasterize it to really high DPI. Okay, now it's, uh, it's actually a pixelated image and I'll use the uh, live trace to uh, make it a vector again. And what this does is flattens out all the different layers of fills and whatever. I just want black lines now. So let's see, live trace. I'll click on uh, the default live trace, which works fine. Uh, I just want to make sure, I'll open up the options and I just want to make sure that uh, white is being ignored. There we go. So now basically uh, there's no white, it's just black. Uh, let me expand that. And, uh, and now we've got uh, vector shapes again, and they're pretty smooth. Uh, so let's uh, copy that. And then I've got another project. So here's my other project. Um, and uh, I'm just going to paste my mandala right in front there. And uh, scale it down. Transparency, multiply. Okay. Lower the uh, opacity just a little bit. And uh, I want to align it. like that. So there you go. That's how you can make a kind of a cool geometric pattern, kind of like almost like a tattoo style. So uh, I hope this video explains and with a little more detail about how you can use my uh, Mandala Creator. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, send me a message. Other than that, uh, thanks for watching.